Well, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is the uh, Monday, October 28th meeting of the Northampton Historical Commission. And as you all have heard, uh, the meeting is being recorded. Um, we had two public hearings tonight, but before we get into that, um, we wanted to, first of all, see if there was any public comment. Um, this would be any comments that members of the uh, public that are not also commission members would like to make um, that are not related to items on the agenda. And if you are one of those individuals, if you would please just um, identify yourself and your address. Is there anyone out there? Yes, no? Okay, okay. we will then uh, move on. Um, the next item is the chair's report, and I'm going to be very brief about this. Uh, just to remind everyone that uh, Steve Strymer is going to be doing a tour of the proposed um, Florence National Register District on Saturday the 2nd. This is coming Saturday at 10. And for all those who uh, are able to join, um, we'll be meeting at 10 at the... Uh, Sojourner Truth Memorial statue. So, um, and I think it's a couple of hours. So I'll uh, we'll hope for good weather and anyone who wants to come, um, please, you are welcome to join us. Okay, um, we have some minutes to approve. This is the next night the, on the agenda. These minutes are from June 24th and Sarah circulated those. Um, if you've had a chance to look at them, I would entertain a motion to accept. Anybody? I will make a motion. Okay, and is there a second on that? I would second that. And is there any discussion or comment? If not, uh, we will take a vote to approve. All right, so roll call vote on those. Dylan? Yes. Uh, Barbara? Yes. Greg? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Michael? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. All right. Uh, the first, the first public hearing is um, to determine whether the property at 396 Bridge Street, which is Map ID 25A-064, should be determined properly preserved uh, pursuant to the demolition review ordinance of the city, which is Chapter 161 of the General Code. Um, as you all remember, at the last meeting, we looked at this property and made a determination that we believe that it was historically significant based on the information that we have. Um, and Dylan was so kind to provide additional. Um, so I just um, wanted to, everyone has the application and I wanted to just review for everybody, even though we have it in writing, but also maybe for those who are not uh, commission members, these are the things that we consider in making the determination about whether we believe it should, should be preferably preserved and whether a demolition delay should be put on it. Um, so the first would be, what is the current condition of the building or structure? Uh, second is, uh, how intact is the building or structure? Third is, what is the age of the building or structure? Fourth is, is the building or structure an exemplary representation of a certain style or period? And if so, how many of those exist in the city? What is the building or structure's role in the streetscape? Are there exemplary construction elements that embody distinctive characteristics of a period? Does the building or structure yield information important to history? Has the building or structure been designed by a famous and or local architect? And has the building or structure been removed from its original location? And I believe from the historic photo that was circulated today, this is its original location. Um, Dylan, you may, if that's not true, please speak up, but I think that it is. No, I believe it to be. 
Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, well, you've all had a chance to look at the application and look at the historic photo. Um, do people have uh, comments about this? And I'm happy to call on you. Well, I, I, went, I went to look at it the other day. I didn't realize it was going to be so hard to get to because you, you know, if you're going, uh, what is it, east on Route 9, you really can't turn in there. But anyway, I finally got to it. And um, it doesn't appear to be in, um, the condition doesn't appear to be that good, but there certainly were still a lot of um, the original details um, uh, of the house there and the, um, what are they called? Like eyebrow windows or something. They were, I mean, all the original windows, the, the, the spaces for those seem to be there, if, if not the original windows. And there were also, um, again, sort of like the gingerbread. And I know the front porch is in very good, bad condition, but that is shown to be an historical um, part of that. And um, so again, that's my comment on the condition. Although, you know, looking at the Form B, and it, it's very interesting that it was part of this group of houses that was built there and um it still seems to you know be important to show that row or that group of them um but um i guess that's all i have to say at the moment i think those are all really important points barbara michael yeah can i ask uh, barbara do you have a sense of the group because i didn't sense the grouping um, I was expecting to see like three houses in a row, but I didn't see that when I went to the site. Where is the grouping exactly? Yeah. Did you get a sense of that? Um, well, I thought I saw some in a like row the, there. The but... house immediately to the left as you're on right. Ridge Street. Right. Doesn't, you know, it's obviously a different period, different style. Right, it is more modern, right. right. Yeah, and then when you go around right. the corner, I was looking and the houses there didn't seem to match it. I saw that okay. reference in the yeah. in the the um, probably the form B the form B yeah, yeah. it was in the form B and yeah. I know that neighborhood yeah. has a cluster of houses that come from that period but I didn't see it as kind of like part of a block of houses like it was described in the form B I just didn't notice that right I think it would be better for me to say that I feel it. Um, it represents that group mm -hmm. and so it would be a shame to lose that one because you're right the one to me that leads to the left is is more modern and um yeah. so i stand corrected with what i wanted yeah. to say about the group it being part of the group initially yeah. when it was built yeah i love i love the uh the image that was circulated the jpeg yeah. was very, my, my god what a sweet sweet structure when it was built you know so yeah Dylan? Yeah, so so this is this is on the corner of my street. I live on Marshall, right? Right, mm -hmm. right around the corner. I look at this house every right. single day, um, for better or for worse. Um, it's it's been going through neglect for decades. Uh, I was last mm -hmm. in the house in the 1990s when it was being rented out to students. Um, it is especially in the last five to 10 years, just been basically rotting in place. Uh, windows have been left open. It's, uh, I don't know what it looks like inside. Um, it was once an incredible, beautiful home that uh, I, I always understood the reference on form B to the group of homes to, to be including uh, houses further down Bridge Street. Mm -hmm. um, so there's at least one still standing uh, that is architecturally similar a little bit for, uh, closer to town on the same side, I believe. Mm. Um, so I'm I'm very fond of the house as it once was. Um, it's hard to see that now. It has so much growth on the property. It's hard mm. to even look at it. Um, as I said, I don't know what the, I'd, I'd be interested to hear what the current condition is inside from the price that it went for. It seems like it must be in pretty rough shape. Um, I've, I've talked to some of the 
members in the neighborhood in the last few days um, who have described what it's been like to, especially the immediate abutters, to live right next door to it um, in sort of disrepair and with animals getting in and out and various things like that. So um, I'm I'm pretty torn about the house. It, it is, it's a very historic family in our neighborhood. The Clark family ran the inn that once stood that was removed when 91 was built and was moved to Hadley on Bay Road. Um, they ran the toll house. Uh, it wasn't this specific Clark, but it's the same family that owned all this land around mm -hmm. here. Um, so there is a real history to the home, um, but and I would love to see it preserved, but I, I, as I said, I don't know the current condition beyond uh, how poor it looks from the outside. And can, can I just ask, is, is the owner present at our meeting? Yes, yes. I do. Yes, he, he had some issues joining, but he is here. And I do have oh, um, okay. photos of the interior to share. Oh, great. Okay, so let's well. just finish going around. Um, Greg, if you have any comments, and then we'll let John, um, Talk and then also should share some photos. Greg, no do you have any no, no I don't. comments? No Okay. All right. And I would just um before while you're teeing that up, Sarah. Um, so I look at that we have sort of nine um items that we nine questions that we consider on this. And I always sort of go through these systematically and see where this falls. And I would say it probably meets six of the nine of them. Um, but uh I'm likewise still on the fence. So I think it would be great um, to look at the interior and John, if you want to uh, fill us in on any other information, that would be great. Well, the place- And welcome, by the way. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, it, the place, I saw a picture today too that uh, Mizzle Valley had, and it was kind of breathtaking where it was back in the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was breathtaking. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, it, it could be brought back there if we had mounds of money that just didn't matter. Um, and uh, I don't have that. I don't think anyone does. Uh, but like I said, looking at that picture the way it was, um, why it was left this way, I have no idea. It's kind of bewildered why anybody would let something like this just uh, kind of rot away. But um, they did. And... Um, you can see where it was, and uh, it, but the the windows have been left open for years. Uh, the yeah, you have vines growing inside the house through the windows. Uh, it's like I said, it's it's a sad scenario, but and you got a question: Why would someone just let this happen? But there's nothing I can I can do to bring it back to that that great life it had and being left the way it was for so many years. Um, and like I said, the pictures are rough. Uh, the, the inside is, and I, the way the windows were open, to tell you the truth, I was a little nervous walking in there because I didn't know what was going to be around the corners where our animals go. Um, they look like somebody had been camping out in the place for, for a bit. And, um, I would think that would be some kind of a concern to the neighbors, um, you know, animals in the place. And then, you know, somebody all of a sudden think that's going to be their house. Uh, so I, it's, 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 it's gone. It's gone too far. Mm -hmm. When you look at these pictures, it, it's hard to even envision the way it was in the other one that was just shown. Yeah, you can, it's sad. You can see the original mm -hmm. sighting underneath and some of the details oh. show there um mm -hmm. but the condition's pretty evident let me grab those interior photos mm -hmm. John, I don't know what most of these are, if you want to. That's the basement there. More basement. Still the basement. I, that's another piece, that's another picture of the basement. Uh, 
That's going up the stairs where the windows has been knocked out for quite some time. Is it um, from the basement going upstairs or upstairs to the second floor of the house? I think it's going to the uh, attic. Yeah, that looks like okay. Because yeah, look at that little triangular window. Yeah. That's just a, a bedroom on the second floor. Another bedroom. That's where the vines are growing inside the house. I mean, the window's been left over for God knows how. The bathroom there. Second floor. It looks like someone's been camping out in there. Mm -hmm. But John, would you say that structurally it's still in sound condition or or not? Because I'm saying, you know, the floors inside, these pictures don't look so bad. You know, a lot of it is obviously it's more than cosmetic, but um I, the person I would say. What would no. you say about the actual structure? It's it's tough to determine. Um, like I said, it's to get it back to its grandeur or get it back to even close would entail quite a bit. There's just holes in the floor. Is that the attic, probably? Yes, that's the attic. I don't know why the windows were all broken up there. I don't know if it was kids or what happened. Maybe he's dealing with no more. For up until a few years ago, the uh some of the family would occasionally come by um we would just see them every once in a while then the windows started being left open uh within the last couple of years um they may have been trying to clean it out or something i'm not sure what was going on but upstairs if you look at upstairs the windows on on the third floor have all been like broken out I had yeah i think that that has been the case for longer so i'm surprised say... yeah go ahead uh -huh. Um, well, I was just to say, when you say the family would come by, was it um, descendants of the original owners of this? They lived or in, just... The daughter lived in uh, Washington. Washington, D.C.? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The best of my knowledge, I think I'm 90% sure of that. Mm -hmm. um, and the I think the mother just passed away. Yeah, the mother would the mother would come by periodically until, you know, I... I moved here in 2008. In those early years, we would see her a lot more. Um, but then it seemed to, and we weren't even sure whether she was still in the property until uh, five years ago when it became obvious that no one was. Well, well all I was going to say is I am surprised that some of this isn't in worse shape than it. Because I'm saying I, I see a mess more for what's in there, but there's, um, there's just seems to be a lot of really nice woodwork you know, and, and the and doors there, and, and, de and details on the doors yeah. and, well what, you know, what i hope to do is get get with the company stairways some, somebody that also had taken down the house over in uh hooker and to, to see if anybody wanted any of this stuff you know to, re to reuse for any purpose um because like they're the, you know the windows have just been These are really nice, um, you know, panel doors, though. They look like they're solid wood. And the flooring does look to be where you can see it, you know, probably original flooring. Good shape. Yeah. 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 The foundation isn't terrible. And the detailing, um, you know, you have this these dentals on the roof line, um, the wood balusters on the stairwell, stairway going down. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. 
After seeing the photographs, does anybody have additional comments or thoughts? Well, I think we're all a little bit surprised. I mean, I've passed that house so many times and it's caught my eye well before this. And I thought, man, that's that's rough. And yet what we see on the inside is a little bit more than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Barbara? Um, I'm more inclined to want it, um, you know, the house that's there made um, usable. Um, just because, again, I mean, what we were saying about seeing some floors that really seem to be not in such bad shape and the doors and all kinds of other things. I mean, I think obviously all the stuff that's in there um, seems daunting, but um, once that's out of there, I think it's, uh, you know, it just seems a shame to to tear down that kind of, um, you know, well, well-built house. Um, I'm, I'm not saying, John, that your houses aren't well-built, but they're just very different. Thank and, you. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're different. You're not, it's not going to be like that. Um, so that's what I'm inclined to see after seeing the inside. I mean, that's how I'm inclined to feel after seeing um, the inside. And I know it's not an easy job. It's a daunting job to, to work with what's there. Okay. Dylan? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I was, I was coming around to the idea of, you know, the neighborhood really would just like it improved in general. The, the yard to be taken care of there not to be squatters uh, breaking into the house that sort of thing um, so I was coming around more to the idea of of letting it go uh, based on in how I imagined it to be inside based on the exterior um, but it isn't you know from what I've just seen it didn't look quite as bad and although you know we're certainly we always we try to be flexible and understand that money is limited that's also not really one of the decision making criteria we we use the main ones anyways um so you know from from what i see i i am right back to really just wanting it to be preserved the way it was and restored um by somebody who cared about bringing its character back i think we should also like you just said what's best for the neighborhood too um, I, I mean, I'm surprised there haven't been more squatters in there to be, everybody's been surprised about that. Uh, and that's been the big thing, but it's, it, it is a daunting project to try to fix. I mean, it, what looks, we know it's all knob and tube. I'm sure of that. And, and a lot of asbestos in there throughout the place. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's quite the project to, to try to renovate it and and, and uh i i really think a, for the neighborhood a clean another houses would be there just would be more a better a better fit i uh generally just um ask greg because greg's another commissioner greg do you have any what, what's your thought about it and uh that's the problem being a libra is I see both sides of it. Barbara, I absolutely agree with. Um, it's, and Dylan uh, is absolutely correct that the house is in deplorable condition. I actually thought they were going to knock it down when they're working on um, the bridges and stuff. I know it's not part of what the commission uh, sees as the historical aspect of it yes absolutely but in this current condition and like uh, john said with the uh, asbestos that's in there i'm sure that wiring is outdated um i don't think that historically it was a phenomenal property but it's not there anymore so i'm not sure how as a commissioner for historical how that comes into play okay. okay 
I just want to remind everyone of the nine considerations we have just um, before we uh, move, go to move to make an emotion about this. Um, first of all, what is the current condition? Is the building intact? What is the age? Is it an, uh, an exemplary representation of a certain style? What is its role in the streetscape? Are there exemplary construction elements that embody distinctive characteristics of a period? Does the building or structure yield information important to history? Has the building or structure been designed by a famous or local architect? And then we ruled out um, whether it had been moved because it has not. So given that, um, I would entertain a motion to uh, either um, have this preferably preserved or to um, issue the demolition. May I say something? I, yes. I, I think the original picture that Sarah showed me has pulled on all our heartstrings, pulled in mine a little bit. I don't think it's ever going to get back to that state. Um, you know, if I tried to, yeah, it's just way, it's way too overwhelming as far as cost. Um, but I do think that original picture did get to every one of us. Like I said, including myself. So that's really all I can say. I don't think the, the cost involved to get it that, to that state or even close would be, even though it may look not that challenging from where you're sitting, but for me, it's, it's, it seems a lot more challenging. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we hear you. Yeah, I hear you. I will say that most of the neighborhood does not want to see the house demolished. Um, you know, it's a funny position because I'm on the, on the commission, but I'm also living this very close to this house. Um, and my fondness for it was not based on that photograph, but based on just walking by it constantly and seeing what it, I mean, you can tell that it was once a grand home <laughs> even today. It's just been left, it's, you know, near demolition by neglect. Um, but to see that the that the bones of it are so strong in one way, um, or to not have it, it's shown that the, that it is about to fall down. Um, I don't know. I'm. I, I feel like I I would feel good proposing that it, we put in a demolition delay of up to a year. You know, as usual with the conditions that we could pull it. At any point, if if uh, new information came to light or conversations with the owner changed our thinking, John, can I ask? It's it's a pretty, uh, and I don't know whether this is uh, an appropriate question, so other commissioners may want to correct me. But um, there's a there's a substantial amount of land there. Um, if you would it would it at all seem more economically viable if you could work on restoration of the house in combination with being able to add other units to the property is there is there a way to think of it in combination with something like that 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 makes this more viable or or do you think it's pretty much you got to go one way or the other Pretty much, I, myself personally, one way or the other. Um, I get you could do a, what you mentioned, and I just I'm doing that right now with a, a house on State Street and Summer Street in Northampton, and it's 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 not doesn't work as smoothly as I I, I had hoped for it to work. Hmm. Okay. Well. Just, uh, you know, I'll just I'll put my thoughts in. Um, I am on the fence on this project, but I also think that it is such an important piece of the streetscape. And, you know, whenever we're presented with these applications, um, if, oh, I think you've probably heard me say this before, John, 
um, we're always presented with a difficult uh, decision because we're, you know, this, our responsibility is towards stewarding the historic resources of the city and preserving history as best we can. So we're always hopeful that, you know, whoever owns a property or purchases a property, you know, will respect that history and um, do, its, do their best to try to preserve it. Um, it's part of owning a historic structure. I think several of us own historic homes and, you know, we have um, I felt a responsibility towards doing that ourselves. So I, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm siding with Dylan on this one. I think that um, we may, I think it would be preferable to see uh, an alternative to somehow saving the building. And um, if that, that takes a year, um, give it some thought we can always do, uh, remove the demolition permit if you or the yeah if you have an alternative you come up with an alternative to demolishing it so um that's where i stand on it if anybody um else has commissioners have thoughts they'd like to share before we um a motion is made can you just check if there's public comment also oh sure and uh yes if Yes, thank you, Sarah. If anybody in the public who's not already spoken would like to weigh in on this, um, please do. And identify yourself. Okay. Can I uh, ask, um, in moving a, ho a home like this, um, you know what? what are what are the options there john do you have any sense of of that no i don't um uh, i don't know what moving companies are still around these days i know these people went out of brimfield many years ago but that was back in the 80s or it's the mid 90s i'm sure there must be some kind of company around but uh that would be a nice well, thing that we want there was a house moved off the, the smith college campus what within the last year year and a half Two years. What did it go to? It it didn't. It was demo. Oh, it was demo. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, it was. It got very close to being moved, but there were oh. too many constraints and hurdles, and it couldn't happen. Oh. What was the house oh. that was moved to Maple? Was it Ma no? It was Park Street in Lawrence. Do you? That one happened recently, and it became it became tied in with a a condo development that was. No, no, that wasn't moved. That was stayed in the same. Location. It wasn't moved. It was. Oh. it was just preserved. It was. Okay, yeah. right. They gutted it and preserved it. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that had been there. Yeah. Any other? But if I if I can just say one thing right. that I mean I know that asbestos is an issue, but whether you tear something down or um, rehabilitate it, you still have to deal with asbestos abatement. So you you have that cost, whichever way you go um so i would also be leaning to towards um preferably preserved and and having a demolition a review period um you know again doesn't can be lifted if you know you come back get some better estimates show us that it just isn't economically possible or there are various but i but i, I feel like i want to give this house more of a chance to uh to survive so i i would move to find the house at i'm sorry is it 396 or 397 yes. 396 bridge street uh to be preferably preserved and that's your motion barbara yes that's my motion okay um is there a second to that i'll second that dylan okay any more comments discussion Okay, we should vote. And Sarah, is part of the vote placing the delay? Oh, yeah. it, period? it would be, yeah. Okay, Barbara, do you want to mention the delay of delay? Over to a year? As Just, for the ordinance. So that has to be part of the motion? Yeah. So that does yes. have to be part. Okay. Oh, and yes. to so um, and, your and therefore, and so if you have to make a motion, therefore, to um, uh, start a uh, up to a 12 month demolition review period and that's from when the um application for demolition was um when filed. it was filed with the building department and when and when was that done that was i'm just curious what kind of timeline we have 
Now, do you remember when you filed it? I know, I, I looked at the no, thing, I but I don't remember what it said. <laughs> uh, it says October 9th on the application. Okay, so not, so not that long ago. Okay, so is the motion okay now? Yes. And Dylan, are you still seconding that? I am still seconding it. Okay. Okay, then we should vote. Thank you. Roll call vote. Dylan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Greg? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Michael? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just thank you. Great. All right. John, thank you for appearing. And uh, please, um, you know, keep in touch with us and let us know um, any more information that you have about it, uh, any more thoughts you have about it, any more reconsiderations you have about it. <laughs> and uh, we're always happy to talk with you. Fair enough, Martha. Thank you. Thank You're you. Okay. All right. Uh, the next one of the agenda is the public hearing for uh, numbers three to five, Clark Avenue. Uh, this is map ID 31D-222. Uh, we are determine, determining whether this building should be properly preserved pursuant of the Northampton Demolition Review Ordinance, Chapter 161 of the General Code. Um, and as all of you recall, at the last meeting, we looked at this building and um, it was uh, determined to be um, historically significant. So that is why we are here at the hearing to determine whether we think this building um, merits a demolition uh, delay. And I'm happy to read <laughs> the considerations again if people need me to, um, but I probably, you've heard them twice, so I probably don't need to do that. Unless anybody wants me to, I'm happy to. No, is that, okay, all right. Um, okay, um, I think we're gonna handle this a little differently. Is the owner of the property here? Yes. Okay, is that you, Rich? Yes, I'm one of the okay. owners. Okay. Um, do you uh, have anything you want to share with us in terms of visuals or a verbal presentation about it, or just we should go with the materials we have at hand? I have no objection to the demolition delay. Well, I'm asking about <laughs> the building itself, not about the delay. Uh, well, I looked at the last building you looked at. Our building is in far better shape. The bones aren't particularly attractive. Uh, we're not sure what we're going to do with this building, but mm -hmm. I think the, the land in back of it is very valuable and we'd like to see a, a mid-rise structure, you know, be developed in back of this building and the one to the right, there's a fair bit of land in back of both buildings. Okay, so the thought, well, we can't really consider any of that in this. Um, we're just looking at the building itself. We'd like to, but that's not really our charge to do that. And I think it's actually probably would get us into trouble. Um, so we're just looking at the building itself and whether we think it should be properly reserved. Well, that's, um, that's fine that you're okay with a demolition delay, um, but I would like the commissioners to have an opportunity to just uh, voice your opinion about the building. Again, giving the considerations that we have for issuing a delay. Does anyone want to start on that? Well, I guess I, I can do that. And I, I okay. do feel um, you know, more inclined to, to find this building preferably preserved. It's older. Um, I think it actually is very, Richie was saying he didn't think it had very nice bones or something, you know, I, I think it's a very attractive house on, from the outside. And it's in a um, fairly prominent place. It's part of the entrance to Northampton and you know, the street that people do pass by a lot. Uh, years ago, a, a, an older building, one even older than it is, was lost um, uh, on, uh, is that Con Street there yet? Or again, Old South Street? The, the Noah Parsons house was lost and it's um so it would be a shame to lose yet another tooth in that um you know in the in those houses another one of them um and again I don't know what it's like inside but outside it certainly seemed to be in 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 good condition to me and and worth preserving Dylan you were yeah. very adamant 
um, even though you were not at the last meeting, you did register your concern about this building. Yeah, I mean, the age, the age alone, it, it looks, you know, remarkably intact from, from the next year. Julius Phelps is a, a really important for a local history figure. He was one of the first two uh, settlers of what is now, what we call now Florence. Um, he then built this house. Um, I did, the only historical information I found specific to this house was that in 1864, I think it was, sometime in the 1860s, they moved it 15 feet back, um, which was, but there was no more, there had been flooding or something. I'm not sure what they were doing in that neighborhood. Um, but of course, before New South Street was built, this was this was the main way through here. And this is a, um, you know, Julius Phelps, is, his name comes up over and over again to the point when I saw it in the listing, I was like, I, you know, instantly remembered him. Um, he fought in the Battle of 1812, or the War of 1812. He, he was just a, a, in a very local scale, he was an important figure in Northampton. Um, so the fact that the house is this intact, um, that he's uh, an old figure, that we don't have as many houses of this style as, we, as we'd like to all make me inclined to want this preferably preserved. Great. Uh, Greg? No comments other than uh, what we had last time. Okay. Michael? Um, I agree with Barbara and Dylan and the comments from last time. I, you know, I think that uh, where it fits as part of the ensemble of what remains in that area is really important. So it's both the structure itself, but sort of the context that it evokes historically. So, um, yeah, I think it's an important, important structure. Okay, and I would just agree with all of that. And then I think there's a similarity actually between these two buildings we're talking about tonight and that they do sit near, um, you know, entrances to the downtown. And that's a very important um, place for those buildings to hold. I know that's the impression people have that they come um, about uh, the character of the city, the history of the city, um, how well the city is um, being maintained, um, how friendly the streetscape is, um, you know, what this place, what this place's history is, what this, what this city's place in history is. And um, I think that I feel pretty strongly about protecting both of those. Um, so I would agree also. Um, and it looks like we have a, uh, at least one member of the public here who would like to comment and there may be others. And is it Rachel? Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, I live in, in Three Clark, actually, with um, my husband and two kids. So I'm here, you know, as, as a very happy resident of Three Clark. Um, we've been here since July of 21. Um, I love this house. I've, I've emailed Rich that this is like my dream house. Um, great it's just it just has such a great vibe inside I mean it's I think it's beautiful it's you know it has its rough edges but it's beautiful um and it has so many great aspects to it you know big spacious rooms lots of windows front porch back porch amazing backyard close to town I mean I would live here as long as I could so that's, um, then we have our three neighbors next door, um, Liz, Rory, and Nava. And we chat sometimes and they're also quite happy in their house, in their part of, in their their side of the house. Yeah. So, you know, clearly I'm, I'm just, I would argue for the, for the, um, for the delay as long as possible. <laughs> So, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Um, I think we should uh, entertain a motion, but actually, Rich, I do have a question. 
Um, if you're planning on building the back of these lots, uh, why do you want to demolish what's in front? Oh, Rachel, thank you for the nice comment. I appreciate that. You've also been model tenant, just for the record. Um, we're really not going to make that decision. We're going to sell the land to a, a future developer. Mm -hmm. And in terms of egress, the three to five Clark Ave building may or may not need to go. Uh, but again, that's not going to be our decision. That's going to be a future developer. It's in our economic interest that the building stay as is. But again, that's that's a decision for a future developer. Okay. So the the, um, the demolition delay would affect that in the sense that you can't really demolish it and you have to wait for at least a year to, uh, if a developer were to purchase it or uh, in the next you know year, um, they would have to wait to the end of the demolition permit to uh, delay permit to um, actually, you know, build something there. That's my understanding. Okay. So you're trying to kind of do this as a way to um, provide a better marketing profile for this property. Am I understanding that right? You can deduce that, yes. <laughs> okay. Boy. All right. Okay. Um, would anybody like to make a motion on this? And are, are there any other comments from the public? All right. Can I just ask real quickly, and I, I know that this isn't actually going to affect my vote, but it's just something I'm interested in. Rich, is there, um, uh, so I, I certainly am sympathetic to the idea of as much in-building as we can do in a reasonable fashion. Is there, you're, you're talking about the access to the back of those two properties there. Um, so logically, where does, where, you know, like if we kept the two structures, what kind of access would there be? Um, Sarah, do you want to handle this or do you want me to handle this? I, I, it's a complicated answer. I guess there could potentially be some uh, access that would be possible through the city parking lot, but there may also be some constraints. I, we don't quite know what it would be without some additional due diligence, I don't think. Actually, we're a little bit further down the path. You may not be aware of this, Sarah. Okay. Um, there's an agreement in place between the city and the two landowners. There's an easement into the roundhouse. There was a land trade. We gave some land up to the city at no charge for the bike path. In return for that, we got an egress into the roundhouse parking lot. So the only reason that three to five Clark Ave would be taken down would be a city regulatory requirement for a second means of egress. And we're not sure um, from a planning perspective what's going to happen there. That's that's the long and short of it, Michael. Okay, great. That that helps me a lot. Thank you. And can I just say one thing? That it um, okay, it makes me very unhappy to see the demolition delay, the the process used to find out whether potentially your building could you know would have to be torn down you know and to to use it you know as martha said almost as a marketing tool because you know you have no intention of tearing it down and yet you've applied for the demolition permit um and we all have to go through this process and it it, it annoys me that we've had to do that that I think that somebody should apply for a demolition permit if they seriously have a reason or want to um, demolish a property. So, Barbara, I, that, I would say that this certainly is not the first time that that's happened. Yeah. Um, I think Rich was really candid and okay, making clear that he doesn't have any right. intention to tear the building down. But right. several of the applications that I can think of were. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not with any specific demolition intent in mind. Um, and just to make the market pro the property more marketable. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, if somebody else did that too, that makes me unhappy. That that's not really the purpose of the ordinance, as as I see it. But anyway, I would move that we find the property three to five Clark Avenue. Is this Clark? Sorry, is this Clark Street or Clark Avenue? Clark Avenue. Clark Avenue, right. Uh, find it preferably preserved. 
and up to a year demolition. I like to call it a demolition review period. I know people say it's a demolition delay period, but that's my motion. Okay, is there a second on that? I second that. Okay, any other discussion? Is, forgive my uh, ignorance of our own rules, but is a year <laughs> still the uh, limit? of how long a demolition delay? A year is, is the maximum currently. Okay. Right. right now. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, and I would just say too, I hope that if it does come to pass that something does get built on that back side of the property, I hope that the city can work with the commission to um, allow access from the parking area so we can preserve the building. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I think we need to take a vote. Roll call vote. Dylan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Greg? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Michael? Yes. Your name. Okay. Um, so we have we have there's just one other item on the agenda that I have, unless there are others that have other things that they want to bring up. Just like to say thank you for your time. Appreciate the service. You're welcome, Rich. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Rich. Okay. Um, I, I do have one other thing, which I don't think was on the agenda. Yeah, it was it, it was too late to put it on. This is the support letter request. Yes, but yeah, I assume I can do that under other business. Mm -hmm. So do you want me to go first, Martha? Or... Uh, sure. So um, the um, Historic Northampton has applied, um, has put in an application to the, with the CPA for um, funding for an historic structures report for the Shepherd House. Um, for some of the commissioners who haven't been on that long to, to know that just historic Northampton is slowly going through um, their buildings one by one, collections. We've gotten a lot. I'm also on the board there, so I should have full disclosure. I've rejoined the board at historic Northampton. Um, and going through and using CPA money um, to really help bring back um, an organization and collections that were really in 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 um, dire straits uh, a number of years ago, and this one is as I said for a historic structures report, um, and um, I believe the total cost is around seventy four thousand dollars, and the application is for sixty four thousand dollars, and the other ten thousand is being covered by uh, a private donor and some other funds from historic Northampton, and. Um, uh, the Shepherd House is one of actually four buildings that's part of historic Northampton, and it was built around 1796 and um, wasn't owned by the Shepherd family until 1856, when it was actually bought by a woman, Susan Shepherd, and then it came down to her son, Thomas Monroe Shepherd, and he and his wife, Edith, lived there, and he died in 1923, but Edith lived there till 19, um, till her death in 19. Um, Oh gosh, it's 1969, I think it is. So anyway, uh, now that there was a long-term tenant, Ma um, Mass Humanities, which was using uh, the Shepherd House for its offices, and they have left, they've moved their offices to Holyoke. So now the building is now empty of tenants. I think Laurie and Betty told me the first time in 55 years, it's been empty of any tenants. So now they feel is the time to do this structured report, which will obviously analyze uh, the building, but also make recommendations on how it might be used and preservation um, uh, requirements, things like that. So I'd be happy to answer any other questions about it. But what what the Historic Northampton would love from the Historical Commission is a letter of support for this application for the um, to the CPA. Okay, um, yes, and, uh, I'm the representative to the CPA from the okay. Commission. Um, so I think it would be a very valuable thing to, for the other other committee members to have. Um, and uh, I was actually at a uh, performance there yesterday and it was looking at the back of that house and I realized um, it needs a lot of attention. So I'm glad that they're, they're, they're moving ahead on this. <laughs> yeah, it's gotten a lot of attention in the past and some of it, the, the port, some of the porches were rebuilt yeah. and things, but... Yeah. Um, and there was something else I was going to say. And obviously, if, if any of the other commissioners, anybody wants to look at the full application, it's on the um, CPA website. 
and it's interesting because it has a lot about the history of the house and some wonderful pictures of the shepherds and their horses and um, the barn that was, the barn that the barn that the CPA helped fund the renovation of was that's that was it's behind the, the shepherd house. So they, they the barn's been taken care of. Now they want to do the house. Okay. Um, does anybody, Dylan, Michael, Greg, have any objections to doing that? No, I would I would be willing to move that we write a letter of support. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I forgive the pun, but they've been such good shepherds of, of <laughs> all these property. Um, I think it's, uh, I don't know, I would be excited to support them. Um, I should also just mention uh, CPA or CPC committee is reviewing this application on Wednesday night this week. Ooh. And, you know, you're welcome to come to that. But in two weeks, um, so whatever date that would be, I don't have my calendar okay. easily in front of me, it'd be the second Wednesday in November, um, there will be public comment mm -hmm. period. So if anybody wants to come and voice support of the application, um, that would be welcome too. And also uh, of the commission's application to document historic outbuildings, so barns and carriage houses and, and other resources that we don't know a lot about, a lot about um, and we're, we're losing it a pretty good clip. Mm -hmm. right. and, and normally I should say that normally Betty or Lori come and do presentations and do the asks themselves, but they both had previous commitments for our meeting and um, they obviously will be at the CP, uh, CPC meeting on uh, Wednesday. So right. they're sorry that they couldn't be here to ask you themselves. Okay, thank you. Do we need to vote on that, Sarah? We don't, do we? Uh, we Sarah? We could just get a, a sense of the meeting, everybody. Yeah. Yes. yes. I think everybody wants to do it. Okay. okay. I I will put that together. And... Great. Thank you. And they are they are also writing a support letter for the the outbuildings uh, application. Right. Great. Excellent. Um, so finally, I just want to mention um, we have two new commissioners coming on board, which is so exciting, sure. and uh, they happen to both be here tonight. Um, I wanted to, I, uh, I, I sort of wrestled in my mind about whether I should introduce you first, but I think it's better now because I want to take some time to just um, have you, Douglas and you, um, Hannah, just say a couple of things about yourself, but um, they're both here. If you don't mind, I don't mean to put you on the spot, <laughs> but um, they're uh, both um, very knowledgeable and uh, energetic. And um, so if you, uh, one of you wants to go first, uh, Hannah, Ray, or Douglas there. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and welcome. And I just say you have not been sworn in. You've actually not been voted on by city council or sworn in, but we okay. expect that to happen probably after the election. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hi. I think my name on the screen says, says Willa. Willa. Yeah. That your daughter. My daughter. Oh. And okay. I couldn't figure out how to change that. But I am <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> And um, Barbara petitioned me to join this commission, asked me to, I think you're stepping down, Barbara, sad. I, yes, I am. I've been on the commission for 20 years. So I, I sort of decided maybe. maybe it was time for somebody else. This is probably my last meeting. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for asking. I um, joined the Historic Northampton board last year. So I've been working with Barbara on that board. And when she asked, it piqued my interest. I'm a business owner. I have a studio on West Street, right across from Forbes Library Workroom Design Studio. It's an interior design studio. So I have the pleasure of visiting um, a bunch of these houses in these historic districts. I'm in and out of them. So it piqued my interest. So um, I'm excited to join. It's a pleasure to see you all. Right. Thank you. Welcome. And Douglas? Um, I'm Douglas there. I've been in the Valley uh, something around 18, 19 years. I, I live in Florence and have been a contractor in, uh, in the last 10 years. Prior to that, I had been uh, doing studio furniture type work and craft shows and so forth. But my whole life, I've always been in the building trades. My dad was a carpenter in New Hampshire, where I grew up. And I'm excited to be more part of the town and here and 
getting my input and my perspective on the events that you guys have coming before you. And I should also say you both live um, kind of near the new, well, what we hope will be the new National Register District in Florence. I know, Douglas, you live quite near. Yeah. And Hannah, pretty near. But I'm a native of Northampton and I grew up in Florence on Willow Street. Oh, so, great. yes, very close to that. Great. Yeah. So now there'll be two of you. Yep. You and yes. Dylan. We hope. And I and yeah. I should say that I'm you know I'm glad that I was able to get new commissioners, but I'll be sorry not to serve the commission with both of you. I know. But at least Hannah and I will still be on this dirt Northampton together. Yeah. And, uh, You're always welcome to come back, Barbara. <laughs> um. Well, <laughs> like, give me a little time. <laughs> okay. A little Maybe time. a year. You can take a year. I might come to meetings. We'll, you want, we'll put a delay meeting. on you. How about that? Right. You can put one month delay. Okay. But that, again, you know, Barbara, thank you so much. I mean, if this indeed is your last meeting, um, thank you so much for all the all you've done for the commission, for the city. Um, you've really hung in there for so long. And I know how hard it is because I've done it too. And so has Dylan. Um, it's, uh, it's been a great commitment. You're a great public servant and we will well, miss you terribly. So thank you. I've been glad to do it. Yeah. Uh, and it has been interesting and frustrating mm -hmm. and all kinds of yeah. things, but interesting. Let's let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. And Did, worthwhile. And definitely worthwhile. Ditto to that, Barbara. I think we've Thank served together did. for 12 years under three, at least three mayors. And uh um, it's just been a pleasure, and thank you for making so many of the motions for us. I don't know what we'll do. Right, yeah. <laughs> Somebody will have yeah. to take that. And also for the award ceremony, that I'm really yeah. going to miss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I have so. told Hannah that, and I'll talk more to her about possibly reviving that, because particularly if you're out and about and seeing buildings, you know, and, and Greg is yeah. too, to, to you can maybe see what could be added to it, and I'll, I'll explain that more to you. Um, Great, what, our, what our historic preservation awards are right or, or were used to be yeah it's it, it's it was a really interesting way to um encourage and um kind of honor people for preserving their houses yeah uh, awesome. are they're no longer well give me a little background of what the historic well, preservation well, we just have another what we did was we and I don't remember when this started, maybe Sarah remembers, because it's well before my time even being on the commission, but um, we gave historic preservation awards and they were to um, actually Smith College to get a fair amount of them. Historic Northampton has gotten some, but just they were big projects, but also very small projects. Maybe somebody who redid their porch to, you know, to, to um, uh, um, re restore it you know, to the way it looked before or just people who replaced windows or just lots of things. And, and as I said, big and little projects, um, it, adding a, a small addition to your house, but making it really work with the house, with your house that, are, that exists, and part of your house exists. And I think, Sarah, are those, is there something about all the awards, at least lists of them and the addresses on the Historical Commission website? Yes, there there is. Uh, yeah. More information about the more current ones, we we were having a hard yeah, time. Yeah, but even on the older ones, just lists of them. And we would get together sometimes at one of the venues and um, have a little party and thank people. And we used to pin up pictures, before and after pictures. And then for later years, I did PowerPoints of them. And um, mm -hmm. it was uh, it, it was sometimes a struggle, uh, you know, we could to get people, because people could nominate themselves or they could nominate the, the um, the uh, contractor who'd done the work for them or but it's more the, like the house or the the actual project is the award winner in a way um so sometimes it was difficult to um get people interested and it just the program has just fallen by the wayside but they were first issued in 1975 um and i think they went annually all the way through yeah. the 2008 recession when people really just were pulling back on the amount of work that they were doing. Right. Um, there weren't as many projects to recognize. So we switched to a semi-annual right. every once in a while sort of yeah. program. But having but I'd love to see them. I'd love to see them back. I really would. I was, I was just thinking as as we were talking about this and given the 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 long stretch of time and the many different kinds of contexts in which the awards have been given, I wonder if it would make sense and this just I don't know, it comes out of nowhere, but um 
wonder if it would make sense to put together a little awards tour, a retrospective. So in kickstarting, bringing it back, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe have some exam exemplary cases from across the years where, mm. you know, people could go and, and we could do a visit to these various properties. So, uh, you know, like five or six and sort mm -hmm. of see how it really works. Um, yeah, that sounds yeah. great. At one point we kind of talked about it, you know, how Forbes Library has its garden tour and we were thinking of doing it. But right. then the issue was with the garden tour, you're just on the outside of the house. And we, we, we couldn't figure out a way to, um, and, you know, it was a liability issue of people well, coming I, I into the house. Yeah, it, but it, we could just because it is different, maybe too, something more like a, a walking tour. Yeah, right? you people could just have do the to outside. Sign up and you actually have somebody that leads it. Yeah. Um, yep. But anyhow, I, that's so great. I, I'd love to see it come back. Mm. Yeah, just one thing. Um, um, we were talking about the types of projects. One, I know one of the awards that we gave was for the new police station. And the reason for that um, mm -hmm. was uh, multifold, um, fold, but I think that um, I actually nominated, I remember this, and I was so glad that the city did infill on that project and they built it right in the middle of the city mm -hmm. rather than like out on King Street or something. Um, and then did the best they could given all of the... Um, programming issues that they have with that uh, a police uh, building in the middle of a city, um, just fitting it into the streetscape. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a contemporary building that, um, you know, was a complementary to its, in, its environment. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but I would think in the net, you know, we kind of, yeah, with the recession and then COVID, I think it kind of really sort of fell by the wayside, but I think we should um, definitely get it because there probably have been a number of really good projects since then that would be eligible. So we'll start talking about that again. Hannah, your first assignment. Great. Good. Yeah, and I'll send you, I'll, I'll get information to you. And um, did you uh, give out plaques? Uh, people yeah, could purchase them. We gave out an award, a paper award on yeah. a, with calligraphy. I would write the name in and yeah. um, people, we offered them the chance to buy and a plaque if they wanted it but they would have to pay for that but they weren't very expensive i have a plaque on my house actually because cool. i got an award once so i we received an award in 2007 <laughs> yeah, you, yeah i don't think we had we were offered a plaque but we do have a um oh. you know, frame sort of certificate right so. right yeah yeah, yeah. No, but my house I, I purchased the plaque oh okay well we shouldn't we, we should you could get it you could still get your plaque if you want <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> Anyway, yeah, there, there's a uh, few of them uh, around downtown that pe people have either bought plaques, I guess, through the, the city program when we were able to offer them um, or mm -hmm. just made their own. So it, it's interesting to, to see what's out there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any other pieces of information people would like to share? And um, we hope by the end of November, Douglas and Hannah, you'll be <laughs> official, but, and Michael took a while, as I remember, mm -hmm. to get official. Um, he, Michael's the newest member, so. Okay, great. Well, I hope everyone has a, um, a good rest of October. Happy Halloween. Happy Election Day. We yeah. also have our Florence walking tour coming up. Yes, on Saturday. Yeah, just to remind everybody again. So you're all welcome to come. Um, and the real purpose is, of, is, it, is to try to, you know, better define what the district might be. But I think Steve is going to be sharing a lot of really interesting information about Florence, so. Martha, one question I had for everyone that Douglas and I talked to you about when we met you um, a few days ago, we had coffee together. Would Douglas and I would, or I'll speak for you, Douglas, but we would like to meet in person. Is that? Oh, yes. Thank you, Hannah. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah. Is that something anyone else would be not interested in doing? Or is that, is this more convenient? I'm, I'm available about that. I, I said that I, I can do it either way. I'm interested in meeting in person. Also. You are, Dylan? <laughs> okay. Um, Michael, how do you feel about it? Um. Well, I, I'm 
sort of interested in both. I, um, I think meeting in person is a really good idea. I think that uh, the efficiency that we've talked about as far as people participating in the meetings is enhanced in the virtual mode as well. So I sort of like six of one and half dozen of the other, especially when we have people that are um, presenting, whether they're you know, owners, contractors, whatever, who are coming from various places. I know that online is more convenient in many cases for them. So, you know, I, I see it both ways. I'm not sure that I, I decided yet, which I prefer. Can the efforts be combined if the commission met in person and then the, could people still live stream the meeting or is that? Yeah, we're, we're where are we at with hybrid yeah, meetings? So. You can do hybrid, but it would be uh, on Zoom. So it wouldn't be like city council where people could watch on, on YouTube. Um, right. Northampton Open Media would need to coordinate that and they, they don't have the staff to do that. Okay. Greg, what oh. do you, how do you, what's your preference on that? Hey, you know, to be honest, uh, it was great to see everybody in person uh, to actually meet people. Um, yeah. I'm still here in my office. Mm -hmm probably for another half hour and so it's convenient but and i am open to whatever's good for everybody if it's uh in person that's great um i'll do whatever okay. uh yeah whatever's neat but i am dying to leave the office for the day <laughs> <laughs> okay so um do we want to make a decision about that now or what decide at the next meeting how do people feel I mean, I'm happy to meet in person at the next meeting if that's what um, is. I say that not thinking, but um, yeah, it was in November, November 25th, right? Yeah. I I won't be able to make that meeting I, if it's in person. I'm happy to join by Zoom, but I won't be able to make it in person. Okay, so maybe we should wait. Wait till the first of the year. Mm -hmm. We could resume the first of the year. Okay, let's do that. Let's just continue um, Zoom and and then we'll um, meet in person in, come January, unless something comes up like another pandemic. Hmm. <laughs> well, you never know, you know. <laughs> okay. Any, anything no, else from anybody? Note. On that cheerful note. Whoops. On that cheerful note. All right. So. Um, Plan on on uh, Zoom for November and December. Yeah. Okay. And and Sarah, we would still if we met in person, but a member could only make it on Zoom. Would they count? Uh, yes, if that's what the commission wanted to do, it can be a little challenging to manage lots of sure if they're mm -hmm. um, if they're yeah. on Zoom, but we certainly could have part people participate. Okay. Online. Okay, that's good to know. What what I don't want to happen is just that we get in. There's like one or two people in a room just looking at a screen, which I've had it happen a bunch of times, and most of yeah. the people are on Zoom. Mm. Hmm. And I guess you can. What? How early do you post these meetings? Do you post them? So we. Weekend? What is that? Uh, unless there's a hearing, the um, open meeting law is 48 hours in advance. So That's what I one, thought. Because it had public hearings on it was posted soon. And if there's a hearing, it's a week? Uh, it depends on what type of hearing. Long well, like one of the we had tonight. Uh, so uh, demo is a week. A week, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if, do any of the committees or commissions go back and forth on this depending on what the member's availability is to meet in person versus meet virtually uh i don't know i'm i'm really only familiar with the you know, with city council and, yeah. and the committees but i there's a lot of boards and commissions around the city and i don't know what each of them okay at, at this point doug do you have a douglas do you have a um to have to have it is certainly convenient with the zoom stuff um but to maybe have a uh not every meeting need to be Zoom, but just a good chance for have some in-person meetings. It doesn't have to be 100% all in-person, but uh, just to get a few times in the room together to meet. And yeah. 
I think that's good. You know, before COVID, I mean, we always we always met in person. It's that's just, and it wasn't that long ago. But all the meetings were in person, mm -hmm. so we managed that just fine. So, okay, so let's stick with that plan, and we can always revisit it um, if we decide otherwise. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, well, with, if there's nothing else, I will um, ask for a motion to adjourn and we will meet again on the 25th of November. I second uh, Barbara's motion. I, I, didn't, I didn't make the motion. <laughs> I didn't want to appear eager to leave. And, you know, you never know, depending upon the um, swearing in, I'm, you might see me again in November. That's true. You yeah. never know. But. If not, I'll see you at some point. But I do move to adjourn this meeting and Mike calls as, as a... Okay, and all in favor, we can... Uh, yes, we can just up. say, yes, I'll put my... Great, right. thanks everyone. Thanks for... Okay. Thank you.